Okay, the study of the Ten Commandments, number 6, Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. There is number 6, thou shalt not kill. And something as simple as four words has such a controversy among many, and especially the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, so Deuteronomy 5.17 Deuteronomy 5.17 is, is part of the law that prepares the Israelite before they go into the promised land Deuteronomy 5.17 Thou shalt not kill Romans 13.9 Romans 13, 9. Romans 13, 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. So there it is. A commandment found in the, in the law to the Israelites, also written by Paul to Gentiles, Romans, Gentiles. We are not to kill. Now, we're not under the law. But it would be advisable for a Christian who has been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is saved, that the Ten Commandments is not salvation. But the Ten Commandments would make you live right and have a good testimony before God and man. I mean, it comes to the fact that a Christian will, if if he goes out and kills somebody, especially with all these Christian gun activists today, the media would love, would just fill their paper with a born-again Christian who has killed somebody. And that would be a terrible testimony to Christians. That would be a terrible testimony to the church that that Christian goes to. And it would make pockets full of money for the media. So there it is. We are not to kill. So Deuteronomy, I hope that's Deuteronomy. Wow. 20 verse 17. I hope that's a terrible right. I said that. Deuteronomy 20 17. I hope that's Deuteronomy. All right, it is. Deuteronomy 20, verse 17. But thou, God speaking to the Jewish person, shall utterly destroy them. Verse 16. But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God has given thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Lord thy God has commanded thee. I thought in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 17, God said, Thou shalt not kill. And then God commands the children of Israel, when you get in that promised land, kill. Well, there's a contradiction. God says not to kill, and God told them, When you get in the land, kill them. Chapter 7, verse 2. Deuteronomy 7, 2. Deuteronomy 7, 2. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. They're talking about the Gentiles, the heathen, that are in the land that has been given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you get in there, God says, kill them. But God said, thou shalt not kill. Exodus 21. Exodus 21, 12. Exodus 21, 12. So... A Jehovah Witness will say, well, we will not go into the military 
because God says thou shalt not kill. There are plenty of jobs in the military that you don't have to pick up a gun or a weapon to serve your time for the government. I mean, after all, the government allows you to set up your occult buildings and your occult activity, and you can't go and serve your country that gives you the freedom? What is the occult of the Jehovah Witnesses style? They don't believe Jesus is God, and they'll tell you, and that's because Jesus is God. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Isaiah says, the mighty, wonderful, the everlasting Father. Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Mighty God. So Exodus 21, 12. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall surely be put to death. Verse 15. He that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Verse 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Somebody kidnap somebody and a ransom or a child sex in, uh, slave industry, slavery. Okay. God said, thou shalt not kill. When you get in the land, Israel, kill them. If somebody kills somebody else, kill them. Quite interesting. Verse 17. He that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Verse 29. For if an ox were wont to push with his horns in time past, and it has been testified to the owner, and he has not kept him in, but that he has killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner shall be put to death. Thou shalt not kill. It looks like God approves of a military campaign. And it looks like in the form of capital punishment. Where crimes have been committed. And God has set forth a stare to say. You're to kill. Them. So I guess when you read thou shall not kill. There's a broad definition. Of the word kill. Exodus 22 19. Exodus 22 19. Whosoever lieth with a beast, bestiality, shall surely be put to death. Chapter 31 14. Thou shalt not kill, but God says there's a crime. Worthy, crimes worthy of the capital punishment. 31, 14, 15. Six days may work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever does any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. There is no contradiction here. We have two forms right now, what we just read in the scripture. We have the children of Israel going into a military campaign under Joshua to fight, to fight, to fight, and to conquer, and to destroy the enemies of God. And we have men and women who have committed such crimes that God has prescribed in the law that those crimes that have been committed they are to be killed or slain. God said, thou shalt not kill. It must not mean military campaign and it must not mean capital punishment. Numbers 15. Numbers 15. Odd book to go, but Numbers 15, verse, uh, excuse me, Numbers 35, 16. Numbers 35, 16. Numbers 35, 16. 
35-16. If he smite him with an instrument of iron, kill him, so that he die. He is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Okay, now we have a definition of a killing. Murder. If a murderer kills somebody, murder, he shall die capital punishment. So, when Israel goes in the land and they're to kill, that's a military campaign. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou honor thy mother and father, are sins against other people, thou shalt not kill, is murdering. Because then God would contradict himself. He tells the children of Israel, go in there and kill utterly, slay them utterly, and if a man commits a crime worthy of death, kill him. And God does not contradict himself, and we have a definition of murder, someone who kills somebody. Let's read on, verse 17. And if he smite him with a throwing stone, wherewith he had died, and he died, he is a murderer, the murderer shall be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, He's a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. <clears throat> Thou shall not kill. Is a re in a relationship as an individual who has plotted to kill somebody for whatever reason. It is nothing against a military com campaign by God or by the government. And it's sure not in, in the reference of a government uh, appli appli yeah, application of the death penalty. When God says, kill him, kill him, and then he reads, thou shalt not kill. Commandment 1, 2, and 3 are in relationship to God. God only, no idols, commandment 4. Uh, honor God's name and the Sabbath. Those are all reference to God. The last six are your reference to mankind. You don't steal from him. You don't covet from him. You don't, your, your parents, you don't steal. You don't commit adultery. You don't lie to him. It's being a good neighbor. It's being a good Hebrew. It's being a good Christian. A good Christian would not commit adultery. A good Christian ought not to covet. A good Christian would honor his family, his mother and father. A good Christian would not kill anybody. And yet you've got born-again Bible-believing Christians throughout the entire church history who've gone out to battle and have fought and have died on the battlefields. But in their death of the battlefields, they had fired a gun, pressed a missile, done something that others have died, and they're not in violation of God. And the word of God. And they don't go under thou shalt not kill. What do you do? Okay, let's, let's name any of the 50 states. And I'm not going to name. I'm not going to give a name. And let's say the execution. Whether it be lethal injection. Or be the electric chair. Firing squad. Whatever it is. And let's say the person that committed a crime worthy of death in that state. Is put in the position he's going to die. Not man that does the switch, pulls the trigger, the injection needle, whatever it is of that state. That man is a born again, Bible believing Christian, loves God, goes to church, serves the Lord, goes out, preaches the gospel, gives out gospel tracts. He's a witness of testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the judgment seat of Christ, for him taking people's lives by, by the laws of the state and by the laws of the Bible, he's going to have wood, hair, stubble. I don't believe it. Let's take a look. Romans 13. Romans 13. Paul, right into Gentiles, Roman government, of all the Gentile governments there are, Rome, Paul the apostle to the Jews and the epistles to the church says in Romans 13, 1, let every soul save the lost. Be subject to the higher powers. President, king, 
mayors, police. For there is no power but of God. God's the highest. The powers that are be are ordained of God. God put the president in the Oval, Oval Office. Not your votes. Because there was a president before this president that the, that the Christians hated. God put him in office. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, you go against the government, you go against the police, you go against the president, you go against the lawmakers. Resistes the ordinance of God. You've sinned. And they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. Jail, a ticket, a summons, confiscation. Uh, I can't say the word. They, they take your property. For rulers are not a terror to good works. If a police car pulled up in front of my house right now, I ain't worried. If he come walking up to my driveway, yeah. Come knocking on my door, Mr. Hayward? Yeah. I haven't done nothing wrong. I'm not worried. The only thing would be with the street ministry. That's the only thing, you know, you're going to arrest me for preaching the gospel, but that's it. That's it. But to the evil. Now, if I've gone out and committed some crime, whatever it is, and that policeman shows up in front of my house, comes up my driveway, and knocks on my door, okay, now I'm afraid. Because I've broken the law. When I get a letter from, from the judicial system of my state, and I've broken the law, I'm afraid to open that. Now, if I've done nothing wrong, and I have not broken the law, I can open that letter. Oh, I got jury duty. Or, you know, I was a witness to something, they want me to go give my testimony. If I'm good to the law, I don't need to be afraid. If I've broken the law, okay, now I'm in trouble. So, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power to do that which is good? Obey the law. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Now, just let me make a little side note here. Hope I don't burn up time. This is under Nero. Nero is Christian killing Christians left and right. Just by chance, thou shalt not kill. And Paul says, you obey that same government. Thou shalt praise of the same. For he, the government, is the minister of God for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, and beareth not the sword in vain. For the minister of God and the revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You know what he just said in verse 4? If you are worthy of the government taking the sword, back then was execution. The government has that power, Paul writ, of God by the Holy Spirit inspiration. That the government has that power to execute you if you've done wrong. Don't plead the fifth. You committed a crime, saved or lost, in every soul. You are to be subject to the powers and the laws that be. And I'm not talking about Christians who died by the word. I'm not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about someone who's broken the law, someone who has violated the law. We're, we're not getting to the Christian testimony. That's another time. If I've gone out and murdered somebody, I have no right to sit in jail and rot in jail. The Bible tells me as a Christian, I ought to be put to the sword, to the gas chamber, or whatever that state has for me. I am not to fight it. That's thou shalt not kill. Now, I'm 51 years old, but if I got papers in the mail saying, uh, Mr. Hayward, call up for service, we're, we're drafting you, and they put a gun in my hand, they send me to another country to fight a war, and then my orders are, shoot them, pull that trigger, the powers that be. The powers be that the President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief, sent me over here to pull that trigger 
I'm to obey the powers. If I don't pull my trigger, if I defile the draft orders, I am in violation of the Bible. And I can't wrap myself in the Ten Commandments and say, Thou shalt not kill. God says, Obey the power, it's lost or saved. And if, if the government, whatever president, whatever branch of service sends you over, whether you volunteer or you're called into duty, and your commander in chief and your captain, your sergeant says, hey, these are your orders, you're going over this country, you're going over here, and I want you to take that gun, I want you to take that missile button, I want to take whatever you're charging, I want you to use it to defend the country. You go there, yes, sir, in the, in, the, in the orders of God the Father and Jesus Christ and in the orders of, of my human government that God put in order. And there's going to be people going to hear this video and they're going to say, he's blown out of water. He's taken it all out of context. Obey, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be ordained of God. The President of the United States I'm not giving names because I don't know when this video is going to be listed. But the President of the United States says, Mr. Hayward, take this gun over there and kill them because they are a threat to our nation. Yes, Mr. President, God put you in charge. Go over and do it. A President of the United States comes up and says, listen, we're drafting you in the war. We're going to go over there. We're going to fight because I want their oil. They won't give us the oil. How dare they give us not the oil? Now, that's not a worthy cause. Or we go over and fight for a church that's not our church. I want you to go over there and kill them because, because you know, they're insulting these, these, these group of uh, religious people. What do I do, Stiley? You're obeying the power. Say, Lord God the Father, I don't believe in this fight. I don't believe in this war. But you put that man in charge. You put that woman in charge. They're the higher powers. You're the greater higher power. He's given me orders to, to, to shoot. I don't agree, but to the glory of God. To the glory of God will I do this. And if that president, if that king, if that ruler, if that prime minister, whatever is of that country, if he is wrong, and if he has sinned to send troops to go fight a war that is not approved by God, that guy will stand before himself, before God the Father. You will not be held accountable for your ruler. You will not be held accountable for your military leader. You will be held accountable for yourself. And the accountability is you were ordered to do that. You go do that. Let every soul, save the lost, be subject to the higher power. For there is no power but of God. If you do not obey your your captain, if you do not obey your draft board, you do not obey the commander in chief, you do not obey your highness or his highness or whatever the ruler of, of your nation is. If you do not obey that nation, the rulership of that nation and the military, and they say we're gonna put you in jail, we're gonna we're gonna execute you. What does the Bible say? For he is a minister of God to, to thee for good. For if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, and bear not the sword in vain. The penalty for you not getting drafted is you're going to jail. You deserve jail according to a God. You cannot dodge out of the draft. And you can't do that in the name of religion. Because the Bible says, okay, yeah, thou shalt not kill. That is a personal vendetta against a man. When you're going out in the battlefield, Let's say I'm going to battle Nation R. Nation F is against Nation R. And Nation F sends me out there. I, I take my gun. I go out there. And here's Citizen R. I have never met that man. I don't know who that man is. I don't know what anything about that man. That man has a gun. He has it pointed at me. He wants me dead. And to protect myself, I got to pull that trigger. To protect my nation, I got to pull my trigger. I got to shoot him. Now, there is no personal vendetta against that man. I don't know who he is. Now, as right as wrong it is, a man finds out 
Uh, I'm going to say a woman, so you won't think it's me. A woman has found out that her husband's cheating on her. That's her sin. Adultery. She goes out, gets herself a weapon. Whatever it is, we read it. An instrument of wood, a stone, whatever it is. And she takes that, that weapon and she kills her husband. With the intent that he has done her wrong. She knows who her husband and she had an intent. And the intent of the Bible says, you don't go kill your husband for adultery. You turn him to the government and you let the government handle him. Though America don't know how to do that. Okay? If I go into a store to rob the store of the money and I carry a gun and that guy gives me a hard time, I am going to shoot him or kill him or stab him. I am not going to, I'm going to kill him because I don't want any witnesses to, dis, to describe me. That's the intent to kill. That is thou shalt not kill. Now you're driving down the road. You're not intoxicated. You're not on your cell phone. You're just driving down the road and the kid runs out in front of your car and there's no reaction. Boom, you knock that kid down. That's homicide. That's not murder. The, city, the God of the Bible, the law for the Jewish people said there are cities of refuge. There's a difference between killing in military. There's a difference between killing somebody with intent. And then the Bible even has a thing, killing accidentally. I, I think it was a, a man's out in the woods chopping and the axe head falls off something like that and hits him in the head. That's accidental. Go to the city of refuge. And we have definitely charged with Joshua and the military men as David and I go out there, utterly destroy them. You were ordered by your government. You say, what about if a man volunteers in the military? He's still under the government. He still has a captain that goes all the way up to the, the branch leader of his uh, of the forces he has. And then he still has the military commandment, the commander in chief or his highness or her highness or whoever's the leader of that nation. Well, he ought not to go in the military. Is there not men and women in the Bible who joined the government and joined the military? Did not people come up to David and say, hey, we want to join you? How can you say, oh, you're not to join the military and it's all through the Old Testament and all through the Bible? Well, I don't read the Old Testament and you're a fool. Paul dealt with, with men that were in the military. There were centurions came to Jesus. And Jesus said, whatever they asked, Jesus helped them. He didn't say, oh, you're in the military. You know, you're condemned to death forever because you're in the military. No. When the military men came to John the Baptist, he didn't condemn them to hell. He said, listen, be, be content with your wages and uh, what about not lying or bearing false witness. There is no sin in joining the military. Now, okay, let's take another episode. All right? You got two guys in the military. Same branch. Same area. One guy was promoted in the ranks over the other guy. Okay? They're both in the military. And because this guy was not promoted and the other guy was promoted... The guy that was not promoted takes his gun and shoots the guy that was promoted. That is not a military order. That is a crime. It is murder with the intent to get rid of that guy. That guy has killed. And ought to be capital punishment. He was not ordered by the president. He was not ordered by the king. He was not ordered by the commander. Okay, so... We're not going to go, we're, we're going to just go into the, we're not going to go into little details and stuff like that. If you are ordered by the government, you are obligated to enter that government. And I'm not, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to go where Peter defiled and did preach Jesus. I'm not going to look at that right now. That's, that's another story. That's another study. It's an interesting study. But we're looking at thou shalt not kill. And if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, every soul and you are ordered by your government to go and kill another military, another army. That is, thou shalt not kill. Because God told the Israelites, get in that land and kill them. And God does not contradict. 
God says if a man kills another man, kill him. God says if a man has a dog and the dog bit somebody, and that dog bite has been reported to the owner, and the owner did nothing about that dog bite, and that dog bites somebody else, and that somebody dies as a result of that, the dog and the owner kill him. Thou shalt not kill. There's a definition of kill. You want to do it for the purpose of an intent to harm somebody's life. There's a purpose of a violation of the government law and God's law. And there's a there's a order by God for the Israelites. And there's an order by your supreme leader of your nation. And I mean supreme, the highest authority of, the, of your government. Has ordered his troops. That's not thou shalt not kill. And when you're a, a draft dodger... You violate, I'm a Christian, I'm a draft dodger, I'm a religion, and I, 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 you're a sinner. And you need to confess your sins, and I need to have God com, uh, the, uh, confess your sins. God's able, oh boy, I blew that word. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is able, ooh, I, I gotta go look that one up. Right. First John 1 9, let's get that one right. First John 1 9. says, if we confess our sin, you disobeyed your government. He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, disobeying the government, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Samuel 20, verse 8. 1 Samuel 20, verse 8. First Samuel 20, verse 8. David ordered men to be killed. He ordered men to be killed under the government authority of the king. There was no sin. David ordered man to be killed because he wanted to get rid of him because he had committed adultery with his wife. That was a sin. God says, thou art the man. To the man that killed Uriah. Not for killing Goliath. There was no sin in killing Goliath. And all the other men that David killed in battle. 20 verse 8. 20 verse 8. It says, Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant. For thou hast brought thy servant to the covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me any iniquity, slay me thyself. For but why shouldst thou bring me to thy father? David's talking to Jonathan. Is it Jonathan? Turn to Acts 25, 11. He says, listen, Jonathan, best friends, if I committed a crime worthy of death, instead of appearing before your father, the king, you slay me right now. David says, if I'm guilty, you slay me. Jonathan was a, mil was a military man under his father, the king. David was in the military. David ordered Jonathan, which David was innocent, you slay me if I'm guilty. And he wasn't guilty of any crime. David says like, like Saul. 25, Paul, Saul, 25, verse 11. If I be offender, if I committed a crime, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. Paul, you wrote in Romans 13, 9, Thou shalt not kill. And if you were an offender, you didn't. If you're a violator of the law, you have told someone to kill you, but you said, Thou shalt not kill. You know Paul was an offender? He was obligated to kill Christians. He was ordered by the chief priest and had the say-so in Christians being killed. Paul says, listen, I refuse not to die. And when you stand up as a religion and say, don't 
kill that man who has killed a whole bunch of people or even killed one person. He's on death row and you ought not to kill him. You are in violation of the scripture. Of David the king and Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, both of them said, listen, we're guilty. David would be, but isn't. Paul is, has been washed in the blood. Both David and Paul said, listen, slay me now. And you got religions out there, the Catholic Church, oh, defend the, the wicked one. That's what they did with Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. But give us the sweet, innocent, loving God who was sinless, who had no fault by the government. Release Barabbas the murderer and kill Jesus. Isn't that interesting? When you defend a man according to the Bible that has done a crime worthy of death row, worthy to be capital punished, punished eyes, to be put under death execution, if you defend that person, you are in the violation of the scripture. Because David Paul says, if we're guilty, kill us. Kill us now. How's that? Genesis 9, 1. And Paul was guilty. Paul was there when Stephen was killed. And he says he gave consent. Genesis 9, 1. And God blessed Noah. This is God speaking. And his sons is said unto them. This is God speaking. Before the Ten Commandments. Be fruitful and multiply. God speaking. Verse 4. God's still speaking. But flesh with life thereof, which is the blood, therefore thou shalt not eat it. I'm going to say real quick, the mass, when you eat the blood, you supposedly think of God, is a violation. But that's not the study. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I requite the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. There is capital punishment. There is death row. If a man has killed another man, capital punishment. There is nowhere in the 66 books of the Bible where a man has been ordered by the government and ordered by God to go out there and slay and slay utterly that they were put to execution or put to condemnation by God. And I'm not talking about a church that starts a war. As the Catholic Church, they're not God. They are not a representative of God. They are a representative of Satan. That's not the power and authority of Romans 13. God is. But long before thou shalt not kill, God says, I will avenge the man that kills somebody. And man is to avenge the killer by taking his life. And that is so recorded in the law that we read in Exodus and Deuteronomy. So are you going to tell me somebody, a government that executed a murderer, is in violation of the Bible when the Bible says you're to execute that murderer? You bunk, you've gone crazy. You don't know the definition of kill. Nowhere is the execution of a man for killing somebody is called kill. Thou shalt slay. What's he say here? Shed man's blood, shall his blood be shed, not killed. Leviticus 17:13. Leviticus 17, 13. I can accidentally kill somebody. That's not murder. You know what the, you know what the, prep, the, the, the Bible says in, in the law and in the, the church epistles? If a man hates another brother in his heart. You know, God said, one of the things is, if you hate somebody and you killed them, that's charges for murder.
Hatred. Hatred is a cause for killing somebody called murder. When you're out there in a battlefield, you don't hate that guy. Matter of fact, I, there was, I forget which war it was, or battle. There was a time I read about, there was, it was Christmas. And during the Christmas day, this, this group of soldiers and this group of soldiers, enemies to each other, got together in a foxhole and were exchanging gifts, making merry, laughing, talking about their families. And then when Christmas was over, they went back to their side and they continued fighting. They didn't have a hatred towards anybody. It was the government saying, you go kill him. The government saying, you go kill them. That's not murder. That's not, shall not kill. When you go out there and kill people because of their color, because of their race, because of their sex, because that is murder. When you go and say, I'm going to take a living thing out of my body because I've got other things I want to do with my body, that's murder. You plan to make the, the, the appointment with the doctor. You plan to, to meet the doctor on a certain day. That's outright murder. All right? You're pregnant and you're walking down the street and you fall down a flight of stairs and your baby, sadly, miscarriage. You didn't plan that. That was accidental. You cannot get that woman saying, thou shalt not kill. That was accidental. And, but then you go and defend the people who kill people who plan to kill people. Euthanasia is a crime of planning to kill certain people. What if my government ordered me to, to kill an old person in a nursing home? It's not the government telling you, that's your job. What would you do in that case? I quit my job and go somewhere else. And if you're staying in that job, it's not following the orders of the government, is you want that pay. That's holy a lot. Listen, if you can get out of killing somebody by a boss or a manager who is not the government, you just don't want to try to go find another job. That's a whole different circumstance. Leviticus 17, 13. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, Jewish, or of strangers, Gentiles, that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. You're not to eat the blood. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is the life thereof. Okay. When you shed man's blood that we've read about in Noah. When you spill man's blood, that's life. Life is in the blood of Jesus Christ and they slain the, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you go and you torture somebody and you have them drip out their blood till they, till they die of anemia, that's murder. God holds that in very much regard that we saw in Genesis 9. Exodus 32, 27. Let's put it plain and simple. Thou shalt not kill is when you have an intent. You hate. And you don't even have to hate. My video game doesn't give me enough thrill. I'm going to go get a real gun. I'm going to go shoot people up. You intended to go and kill people. And you didn't have to hate them. Your video game didn't work good enough. You lost your thrill of shooting uh, whatever you call the video game people. The icons or images. If you buy a gun, and here I go, I'm going to lose my friends on this one. If you go and buy a gun with the intent to kill somebody, you are a murderer. 
In the Bible, you do not have to physically kill somebody to be charged with murder. Joab's brother was charged with murder when Joab did the killing. Ahab was charged with the killing that Jezebel did, but Ahab was in charge. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm, I bought this gun because I'm going to defend myself. If I have to kill somebody with it, you better be very careful because now you are entering in the realm of If a man looks upon a woman to lust after his heart, he has already committed adultery with her. Well, see, that's not good. If you bought a gun with the intent of your heart, that's not scripture. Oh, yes, it is. I've got to defend my, my family. God's not able? I just lost a whole bunch of people. You mean God can't protect you? Exodus. Move on, 32-27. Those people that hate me are probably now turned off. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, Go in and out from gate to gate, Throughout the camp, Slay every man his brother, Every man his companion, And every man his neighbor. This is long after thou shalt not kill. There was a crime committed in Israel. A sin. And God says, Go in there, Utterly wipe them out. What do you do with that one? God will tell the government. God will tell people. I want them slain. The government will tell you. I want them slain. Right or wrong. If the government orders you. If your boss says. I want you to go kill that guy in the job. I quit. And then turn them over to the authorities. Numbers 25.5 Don't go right hiding yourself in the scriptures because you're a coward. Okay? I tried to join the Navy and migraines kept me out. I don't mention much about it, but you're a coward if you're going to hide in the Bible to do something the Bible said you can do. You can join the military. And you don't have to go into a, 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 a career in the military that has to pick up a gun or a weapon. You can go into office. You can go to medical staff. If you go in, under the medical, you're protected. They're not supposed to fire upon medical personnel. And you don't have to carry a gun as far as I know, and I could be wrong on that. Man, you can do a lot more good if you don't want to carry a gun in the medical field than you... Oh, that's right. The Jehovah Witnesses are also against giving blood. Nonsense. Listen, myself and my wife had to have, to have blood given to us. Listen, life is in the blood. No, if we don't sign the papers for, for the blood, she's going to die. Give her blood. Please test it for, for, for diseases. Came to me too. I guess I wouldn't be a Jehovah Witness. I've had blood received. I've given blood many a time before my blood became too sweet. 25.5 Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his man that has joined the Baal Peor. Everyone that is in violation of another God who has turned against Jehovah, go and slay them. Yes, we're in the Old Testament. We are not called as Christians to go out and kill Catholics. We're not called out to kill uh, Charismatics. We're not called to kill Jehovah Witnesses. We're not going out to kill religion and, and heathen. We're going out to get the gospel. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's what a Christian does. And if you kill somebody, if you murder somebody, that gives a bad flavor for Christians. As much as the, the preacher ran off with the piano player, the the... The music instructor ran off, you know. But there it is. What are you going to do when God said in the Old Testament, Thou shalt not kill, and the Old Testament, go and kill them. Evidently, kill and orders to kill are a total different subject of definition. 
You just want to be a coward. That's what I say. So, number 35. Oh, boy. Number 3520? Number 3520. But, number 3520. But, if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by lying of weight, that he died. Or if there be enmity smite him in his hand, that he died. He that smote him will surely be put to death. All right. That guy in the military is waiting there. He has been given orders. I want you to protect that trail. If they don't give the password, you kill them on that trip. Don't you dare let them into this camp. All right. He's lying away. So here comes the enemy. Here comes one enemy. Password. Ooh. Incorrect. The man that has been put on guard duty has no idea who that man is. That man has not given the password. Or whatever he's been ordered. The soldier has been ordered by his commander, sent forth by the government. All right. Kill him. Because if he don't kill him, he's going to get into the camp or wherever, and he's going to do some damage. It's called protection. Protection is not killing. Well, he says, Stalin, you know, when I buy a handgun and, and I'm going to go kill somebody, that's protection. Who ordered you? Were you ordered by God or you were ordered by, I'm going to say for America, you were ordered by the president to protect yourself? I got the Constitution right. Yep. Where does it say where does it say for Christians to protect themselves? Lord, we got two swords amongst ten men, eleven men. That's enough. You say Paul didn't have to uh, yeah, he had to protect himself. They had to protect themselves. I don't think they killed anybody. I think God protected them. You mean God can't protect you? All right, in the defense of your family, okay. You kill an un unsaved man, a lost man. You just sent a person to hell. Now, I'm not going to get into the you know right or wrong with guns. I'm just, just throwing it out there. Pray about it. But don't pray to the God that loves guns. Pray to the God of the Bible. We see all kinds of people being ordered and murdering in the Old Testament. The only ones I see dying in the New Testament are those that are killing Christians. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Find me one Christian in the New Testament that killed another person, saved or lost. Go ahead. 1 John 3.15. 1 John 3.15. You don't like it being, oh, he's going against my gun. No, I'm standing up for the Bible. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Hatred is a strong cause for murder. That military man does not hate the enemy or the individual enemy. Now, there are people who hate Muslims. I think probably so. But you're not. If, if you're doing battle in Afghanistan and you got one Muslim there, you don't hate him. Matter of fact, a true honoring Christian would have the opportunity. He probably witnessed him. Then shoot him. Well, see, there we go. Get my, that, that man sent by the government. So you want to turn this into gun rights. Exodus 14 25. And we're, again, we're running out of time. Exodus 14, 25. There is a planned objective to kill somebody. That's murder. That is thou shalt not kill. When you've been ordered by the government, that's not thou shalt be killed. We've seen it. Moses told him. God told him. And then there's an accidental killing. And then, like I said, when you get into guns and handguns, 
That's a very fine line, I'll admit. That's a very fine line. 1425. And took off their chariot wheels, and they dragged them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Here God's protected the Jews. And the Jews had no weapons. Deuteronomy 4.46. Deuteronomy 4.46. And I, I, I apologize for being in a hurry, but we got about five, six minutes. Deuteronomy 4.46. You can slow down and pause. I can't. Deuteronomy 4.46. On this side of Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sidney, Shihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, who Moses and the children of Israel smote, after they were come forth out of Egypt. Here's Israel killing a group of people, a nation. Thou shalt not kill. 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15, 1. A tent. Was it your intent or was it the government's intent? And Samuel also said and saw, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people of Israel. Verse 2. Thus says the Lord holds, I remember what Elimelech did to Israel. Verse 3. Now go and smite, smite Elimelech and others destroy all. First Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. God is doing it. The one that said thou shalt not kill is saying go kill him. Deuteronomy 17, 19. Now Saul and they that were the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Here's the battle of David and Goliath. What did David do? He killed Goliath. Has it anywhere written from Genesis to Revelation? Is there anything written that David sinned against God by killing the giant? And David was not a soldier yet. They brought David to Saul. I can go kill him. Really? Yeah, I met this, this lion. I met this bear. And the Lord gave me victory. All right, David, you're in the military now. Here's my armor. Here's my suit. David puts him on. He says, this ain't going to work. Why? It's too big. Am I still in the military? Yes, you are. He goes out. He gets his weapon. The slingshot. And he gets his ammo. Five stones. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that David sinned against God. Now David had an adulterous relationship with Uriah's wife Bathsheba. David tried to get Uriah drunk and to go down and sleep with his wife so it would look like Uriah got her pregnant. It didn't work. When it didn't work, David said, take Uriah, put him in the battlefield, tell Joab to put him in the hottest battle ever. Here's a battle. And everybody relieve him, let him be all by himself, and he is slain. And David said, I mean, God said to David, thou hast sinned. You can murder in a battlefield. When you have a personal tent with a personal thing that is, I want one person completely dead, or maybe a group of people. You can have a group of people. Uriah's death, or a whole company of Uriah's, or a whole station, whatever you call it, a whole group of Uriahs, if you want them purposely dead and send them into battle, that is murder. But if you send a group of Uriahs or a group of men out there in the battle, or a young boy to kill a giant, and in battle the giant or the, the enemy is killed, or the sinners against God, nowhere, Nowhere in the scriptures is that counted for his murder. Thou shalt not kill is when you want somebody dead at your own hands or paying somebody. Whatever it is, you hate them in your heart. And you don't have to do it. Somebody else can do it. But you're still charged. I hope this helps you out and I've turned many people off because of the gun. I've turned many people off because this is a hard commandment for people to believe. This is a hard commandment of religion. 
If you love the word and you study the word, you'll still